This video is just a short extract from the entire course. If you wish to see all of the videos from this series at higher quality and in far larger screen size, head over to ifskills.com. There have been some minor changes, but major as well, to the user interface and the user experience in AutoCAD 2013. The most significant change in the user interface is with the command line. In the past, the command line has always been there in AutoCAD, and don't worry, it still is. It just looks different now. Before, it used to stretch the entire width of your screen. Then later, it changed very slightly and became a palette. You could then pull it out and lock it in, hide it, easily show it or not show it. Well, now we have even more control over how the command line works. There are much more options to it. It's very user-friendly, very intuitive, and it can get out of your way, but always be there at the same time. If you've used AutoCAD before, you'll recognize this change right away. This is the new command line, right here. It's a little bitty bar. I can click and hold it and move it around my entire screen. I can lock it into the top here. I can click it, hold it, and drag it out and lock it into the bottom. And this is more of what it used to look like. But that takes up a lot of room. If I pull it out or undock it, it's now just a little floating toolbar thing. And I can snap it in here. I can stretch it, make it smaller, make it wider, etc. I can even make it taller. You can change it to fit the needs of the user. This makes it very intuitive and very useful. Now it still works the same way. I can type line, and it prompts me for my next step. Pick my first point, now pick my second point, or undo. I can click inside the command line now to do the undo, if I'd like. So that's kind of a neat feature. I don't have to take my hand off of the mouse. I can keep working that way. I can click here and see some of my most recent commands. I can still press the F2 button and it will pop out just like that. Now in the past when you press the F2 button in AutoCAD it would open up the text window. I can still do that by pressing the control button and F2 at the same time and it pops out as before. But now when you press F2 it just pops out all the text. And I can still select it, highlight it, copy it, etc. You also get a little gray area here of some of the last things you've done, some of the command lines, even though you don't have everything stretched out. And as you work in your commands, everything is still here. Now I can close it by clicking on the X and then bring it back again. I can also customize some of the ways that it looks. I can mess with the transparency, making it always solid, or making it very, very transparent. This is kind of nice. It'll stay out of the way, but yet it will still be there. Whenever you hover over it, it comes back more solid. You can right-click inside anywhere in the command line to get to your recent commands, your autocomplete settings, lines of history, etc. Or to go to your options command even. Or just click on the little wrench. I like to see the command line a little bit, and I want to keep it at the default settings for purpose of this video, so I'm going to keep that at 70%. Now you can also reduce the way the rollover looks, but it can't go any less than the normal transparency setting. See, when I click on the click to preview button, that's what the command line will look like when I hover over it now. Find the setting that works best for you. Now the autocomplete is a really cool feature. And as you type in your commands, AutoCAD will populate a list of possible commands that it thinks you might want to use. 
you can turn any of these options on or off. The auto append, which means it will automatically make the list. A suggestion list, display the icons or not, system variables, etc. As I type, a list is populated and then auto appended or added to saying, hey, I think you mean the line command. The more you type in, the smaller the list is going to get because it lessens the possibilities. The autocomplete is a great way to find a command that you aren't quite sure of what it is. Or maybe it's a long one, like data extraction. I can start typing it in. And there it is. I don't have to go and type out the entire thing. I can get to it right here, click it, and then the command is started. So there are a lot of cool things about the new features and settings to the command line. It gets it out of the way, gives you more drawing real estate, but yet is fully functional. Now, one of the other user interface and user experience enhancements in AutoCAD 2013 is through the properties palette. Press Control and 1 at the same time to open up the properties palette if it isn't already. And you can select any of these objects, your line or one of the 3D objects here, or anything else that you've drawn. Kind of zoom in here to give you a look. Right now, this is just a white set of lines. It's a white solid. But I can preview some of these general settings. If I want to take a look at a different color, as I move my mouse over the different colors, I get an instant preview of what the color is going to look like once I pick something. So if I don't like it, I don't have to do it. Any of these pull downs that have options will give me that preview look. And I can do the same with the transparency setting. Of course, it's kind of hard to see anyway, but there it is. That's just a little thing. And it's kind of nice if you're trying to find just the right color of something. It's not a huge update or, hey, you know, with this new setting, I need to buy AutoCAD 2013. But it's a little thing that might help you out from time to time. Another difference in how we interface with AutoCAD is through the model space and paper space or layout tabs. If I come to the layout tab in the ribbon, I can see some of these options here are grayed out. Well, those options are only able to be applied in a paper space tab. If I go to the view tab in the ribbon, I have something similar. Here I can change my model viewports. Before I do that, let's erase this line, make things a little bit more clear. Model viewports work in a lot of different ways. I haven't changed the model in my file in any way. I'm only changing the way it's displayed to me in model space. I can change some of these views very quickly so that I can work with them and look at them all at the same time. Now when I go to paper space, the model viewports option is gone. But I do have other layout tabs or paper space tab options in the layout ribbon tab. Now I can make different views, which we'll talk about later on, and I can work with my viewports very easily. I can make a rectangular viewport. I can make a polygon for a viewport. And I can do these things very quickly. And it's called the Layout Viewports panel and the Model Viewports panel. So these things have been changed on how you interact with AutoCAD's ribbon or its user interface just slightly. But they're nice little enhancements that do help out and do make things a bit easier.